Hey everyone, the name is Eric Thor, and if you know your Myers-Briggs personality type, well, then you can put terms and understanding on your innermost values. You can start to explore and understand and figure out your core passion, who you are at your best, and who you are when you are in a happy, positive flow state. Yeah, your Myers-Briggs type reflects your most dominant interests, who you are at your best. Now, when you take the Myers-Briggs personality test, there is a chance that you'll make a mistake. You'll answer based on who you are right now. And tr truth of the matter is, we're not always true to ourselves. Sometimes in work, in relationships, and our own friends and family, we compromise and hide ourselves. And we don't always dare to express ourselves and what we are thinking and what we value, what is most important to us. So it's very important to answer honestly and to really think about it for a second. What really makes me happy? What really puts you in a state of flow? Yeah, you want to figure out your flow type, not your current identity or development. You want to figure out how you can maintain and possess this flow type in your daily life. And in today's video, we'll be walking through the 16 personality types, the 16 flow states, and we'll be learning about your unique disposition and your unique values and thinking preferences. Starting with the private types. First, a lot of people who take the Myers-Briggs personality test are private types. A lot of people are interested in formulating their own ideas and theories and their own insight and their own understanding apart from everyone else's. So we like to theorize and we like to formulate theories and ideas about things. It's the private and it's the curious types that are the most interested in Myers-Briggs personality type indicator. So if you're coming out of this and you're like eager to learn about yourself and you're really interested in the abstract concept of personality and who we are and what makes us who we are, then you should really be exploring these traits. These two traits are related to intuition and they're related to your ability to imagine and to consider abstract thought and possibilities. It's related to being able to think intuitively, to be able to think about and reason about things you don't always know or don't always understand. And privacy and freedom are necessary for intuition to be fully flourished. You know, when you're free, you can have ideas and you can say things, you can speak your mind freely, you can say what you're thinking about, you can do what you want to do. And that allows and that enables imagination, that allows you to imagine yourself. What could I do then? What could I say? What could I do next? Where could I be? Who could I be? Who could I become tomorrow? You know, that's tra it allows you to spot your own inner transformation process. If you're private, you can have your own ideas, your own thoughts. You can take time away from others. You can think and theorize. And you can form ideas. And you can go into yourself. And you can, in this inner world, this, in this introverted, intuitive process, you can distinguish and learn things about yourself and about the world and how it works. And you can get this sense of insight, like... This is how I see the world. This is how I think it works. And you can have this, you can hold this on to yourself, you know. If you feel a need to hold this on to yourself, if you feel a need to wait before you share with other people, if you tend to be private, if you tend to be described as private or somewhat secretive at times, then you should really be investigating introverted intuition. Introverted intuition hinges on privacy and on your inner state of mind, your inner intuitive process, your inner imagination, and in letting on and growing and nurturing this process in yourself. Extroverted intuition hinges on instead freedom. And freedom is, for an extroverted intuitive, you know, being able to go out in the world and to learn new things and to ask questions and to be curious, to be allowed to be curious, to be allowed to ask any question and to have any thought or to say anything that's on your mind, to be able to try out new things without people telling you not to do it. And a lot of people are inhibited in this way. They don't dare to express themselves. And if you don't dare, if you're shy, if you're holding yourself back, you might miss this, but what you want to look for is this curiosity. If you feel this urge to ask, if you feel this urge to test, if you feel this urge to go out in the world, then extrovert intuition can really fit that process. Extrovert intuitives are, for example, the ENFJs, the ENTJs, the ENTPs, and the ENFPs. All have this process, all have this thirst to learn, all have this thirst to figure things out. 
if you are an introvert intuitive, you should be looking at being an INFP, an INFJ, an INTJ, or an INFJ personality type. Comparing to the sensors, what you'll find is sensors are either patient or they are present. The present types, the extroverted and sensing types, are all about being able to be in the moment, to be in an environment, to be where things happen, to be where things are going on, you know, to have things happening around you, to have, be in a strong situation, to be at the party, to have been the one to see that person when that thing happened, to be a part of experiences and to be a part of things, to be one of the people that jumped in the lake uh, uh, on that evening, you know, to be one of the people, one of the ones that were doing something, that were out there living life, to be, to live life. It's very important if you're a present type, if you have this present disposition, this disposition to be in the world and to be a part of the world, you're going to respond very positive to this value. If you're an introverted and sensing type, you'll prefer patience. Patience gives this great boost to the introverted and sensing process. When you are patient, when you allow yourself to wait and to see how things are going to go down, when you allow yourself to observe how other people do something before you do it, when you allow yourself to sit and think and study, when you allow yourself to look at the details and to master everything before you go out and do it. You know, Introverted sensing is all about that process, that process of learning about something, studying something and waiting and being moderate, you know, being able to conserve and wait and save things for tomorrow, you know, to not do everything at once, but to save things for the next day. Introverted sensors don't like to do everything at once, but always like to save and make sure there are some things left for tomorrow to preserve memories about things and to preserve experiences. Introverted sensors are the ISFJs, the ISTJs, the ISFPs and the ISTPs. Present types are ESFJs, ESTJs, ESTPs and ESFPs. And uh, there are two letters here, the third and the fourth, that I completely ignored. Feeling, thinking, perceiving and judging. Feeling and judging has to do with kindness. Thinking and judging has to do with ambition. Thinking and perceiving has to do with skill. Feeling and perceiving has to do with honesty. These four traits are different values and while all people can find these values to be good everyone can say wow that person is ambitious that's really cool and only a set number of types respond positively to being ambitious and to working on an ambition and to pushing yourself to keep working on an ambition to set new goals to, for yourself to set objective definitions of what you want to do and what you want to achieve and how you want to achieve it and it's the thinking and judging types that get the most value out of ambition. It is the thinking and perceiving types that get the most value out of skill. Thinking and perceiving types want to be good at something. They want to have skills, to have abilities, to be able to do something well, and to be able to do it more and more efficiently. They feel this desire to become better at something and to improve at something. Thinking and perceiving types have a disposition to be competitive to want to beat competition, to be the best, to be better than other people, or to become better and to see yourself improve. Thinking and judging types have this disposition towards being ambitious and hardworking, towards wanting to have something to do and to wanting to push yourself, to wanting to test your abilities and to keep pushing yourself to be better and to improve yourself in different ways. Feeling judging types have this disposition to be kind, to want to help other people, and to want to be caring towards others and want to show care for others. Feeling judging types want to show other people that they care and that they, other people matter to them and that they listen and that they're here for other people. Feeling and judging types want to be involved in other people's lives, to help other people through something, to show other people I'll be there and I'll support you and I'll go through it with you and I'll to help you out in whatever way you need, you know. Feeling judging types get this positive state inside, a sense of pride when they're able to be there for another person in that way. Feeling perceiving types have this disposition towards being honest, of wanting to say the right thing, to wanting to speak up for yourself, to wanting to say what's on your mind and to wanting to share with other people what you think of wanting to hear what other people think, to wanting to hear other people's truth. 
The disposition towards honesty in a feeling perceiving type like the ESFP or ISFP or INFP or ENFP personality type is, the dis is this disposition towards wanting to hear people out. So why did you do it? What made you want to do it? What possibly inspired you to do this? You know, uh, What did you do exactly? Was it good or was it bad? Feeling perceiving types want to evaluate what things we do and to put terms on it to help us understand it. They can make us aware of our own behavior. They can show us when we're doing something that is wrong and when we're doing something that is good. You know, They can show us and put terms on our behavior and how we're influencing other people and how we cause other people to feel with what we do and with our experiences. Feeling and judging types are the INFJs, ISFJs, ESFJs and the ENFJs. Thinking perceiving types the skilled types are the ENTPs, the INTPs, the ISTPs, and the ESTPs. Now, these are eight of the 16 values, and there are eight more to talk about. But there are also other important things that we must mention. Now, you want to know what personality type you are. Well, then you want to know how you respond to the dichotomies and how you feel about these different topics, you know introverts they are trained to get more certainty and more inner clarity when they go inside they are clear on the inside and they are scattered and uncertain about the outside introverts believe the inner world will provide certainty and knowledge about the situation introverts go inside to get a sense of idea of how the world works and to understand something extroverts go into the world to ask questions to find out secrets to get information to understand how the outside world works. Extroverts believe the outer world will give some kind of stability and some kind of knowledge. Introverts believe the inner world, reasoning, theories, questions inside will give answers and understanding of how the world works. And we go inside, you know, people think introversion is static. People think being an introvert is being in the inner world, never sharing anything, never going out, never doing anything. And people think extroversion is just in the outer world. Just what everyone thinks, what everyone else thinks, what everyone else does, what everyone else is doing, but not what you are doing, not what you are thinking, and not what you believe. But it's rather a process. Extroversion is a process of taking things from the outside to finding this and that and that, you know, and to making sense with that. So that person said that to that person. What do I think about that? Wasn't that a rude thing to say? Why did they say that? Why, why are they being like this? Extract intuition is going into the world and saying, Hey, shouldn't we do that? Hey, shouldn't we try that out? You know, to have your own ideas about what you want to do, to be curious, to have your own things you want to say, to, have, to want to tell people this, to want to share information with other people and to wanting to share your own ideas with the world and to ask questions and to be a part of it. You know, extroverted sensors, they want to be a part of the world and they want to not just be a part of what's happening, but they also want to create fun situations for everyone, to create great experiences, to get everyone to do something, to take an initiative to something and getting everyone else on board, you know. So that's very important to consider. An INFP is not somebody that will only sit in their own inner world and will never want to go. It's not somebody that is shy. It's not somebody that is reserved. And being shy is not the same as being introverted. Being shy it's just a developed state. You can be shy and extroverted. And you can be outgoing and introverted. You can have formed your own ideas as an INFJ or an INTJ. And then you can want to go out in the world thanks to your ambition and want to push it out and want to share it with other people and want to direct the world in some way in accordance with your inner world. So you have to look at where someone is coming from, where you are coming from. Are you coming from the inside, trying to go into the world and to do something? Or are you coming from what you've experienced around you? And having thought about that, decided what you care about and what is important to you, and then share that with other people, you know? It's a process, an orientation, a flow. It's not something static. Flow is something that is moving. It's something that is coming from somewhere, either from the inside out or from the outside in. When you think of sensing, you have to think about sensations, strong experiences, loud noises, bright lights, parties, things that are happening, action, things that are going on, you know, it's about resources, it's about experiences, it's about life, you know. 
But intuition, that's about imagination. It's about dreams. It's about ideas. It's about abstractions. It's like, wow, I want to do this. Or imagine myself in this situation. It's fantasy. It's fictional. It's like this ability to think of something that you haven't experienced. And intuitives have one key disposition, and that is they don't want to be too overwhelmed by sensations. They want to avoid overwhelming sensations, strong lights, strong noises. And ideas and the imagination is a way to avoid that. You know, The imagination gives a sense of thrill, a sense of rush. It gives a sense of hope and optimism to an intuitive. It's ideas give hope. When there's an idea, there is hope for an intuitive. That's a very important thing to consider. For a sensor, it's the other way around. When there's something to do, there is hope. When there is some kind of routine to follow, there is hope. But when there is no routine, when there is nothing to do, when you don't know what to do, that's when you feel despair. Or that's when you feel uncertain. That's when you feel confused. What do I do next? What do I do now? You know, An idea feels abstract and intangible and hard to prove for a sensing type. Reality feels fixed and set in stone to an intuitive. And that's why it's also kind of numbing, it's overwhelming, it's burdening. It's burdening to carry it on your shoulders. An intuitive experience is sensing to be a burden. A sensor experiences intuition to be a burden. So it's about freeing yourself from that burden. Recognizing that you're an intuitive, filling your life with ideas and allowing yourself to be in a creative process, to allow yourself to change the world and to change things and to make your own decisions, to allow yourself independence, to allow yourself peace and quiet and tranquility, privacy away from where everything is happening, to not have to go to the party, but to sit down with perhaps someone you're close with and to spend time alone to read or to think or to draw. As an extrovert intuitive, it's also equally important to not get too caught up in the moment. The extrovert intuitive is about transforming a situation. While they are in the outer world, they don't want to get caught up in it. They don't want to get caught up in everything that's going on and in the heat of the moment. They want to remain in control in some way, to be able to keep making changes and adjustments, to not take the world as it is, you know. To not just go along with everything people throw at you and to not just be in the moment, but to make changes and new suggestions. Maybe we can do this instead, to have discussions about what to do next and how to do something, to come up with alternative plans and to be able to transform a situation, to take something that's going on and to make it to something different. Let's do this instead. Maybe we should go there instead, you know, to feel this urge to go somewhere else or to go to do something else or to take on a new activity. To because of curiosity, want to explore what's on the other side of the door. Hey, we've never been at that place before. That ability to want to try things out. Feeling and thinking, that's, that's about, you know, that sense of goodness. Where do you derive your sense of goodness from? What do you feel is right? What do you feel is important? What do you feel matters? A feeling type derives goodness from feeling. A thinking type derives goodness from thinking. When there is a rule, and when you follow that rule, you're doing good as a thinking type. If you are helping someone, if you're there for someone, even if that breaks the rules, you're doing something good as a feeling type. But the thing is, when you act, sometimes you can act out of negative motivations. Feeling types can have a grounding feeling of thinking. You know. Feeling types can experience a grounding sense of, oh, I should not do that. Oh, if I break that rule, there would be consequences. Feeling types can experience this. They can notice. They can be aware of this. And to feeling types, rules are a constraint. Oh, no, I have to follow that rule. Or no, I broke that rule. That's terrible. I shouldn't have done that. You know, now there will be consequences. But they won't feel that it's good to follow the rules. They only feel that it's bad not to follow the rules and that's important you know to consider the question of good and bad what is good and what is bad to you often for a thinking type it's not that you enjoy being good and kind to other people but it's that you don't like having been rude or offended somebody a thinking type doesn't want to offend people is afraid of offending people because they know there will be consequences of this this will impact other people in a bad way and it's that negative consequence that stress 
that can get some thinkers to confuse themselves as feelers. You can get so carried away trying not to offend everyone and you can think that is feeling and you can think that you're a feeling type. But if you get your sense of joy from thinking, from skill, from being good at something, from competition with other people, from being better, from doing the best or from using your skills to do something to really change the world, you know, to reach an ambition, to reach a great goal, you know, to create something amazing, to build something. That is the true sense of like, I've done something good for a thinker. That is what gives you a sense of having done something good. For a feeler, it's having been honest, having spoken your mind, having shared your 50 cents, having shown other people what you feel and what you think is right, having stood up for something, having stood for something, having had a significance, having had connection with somebody. So that's very important to think about. Feeling is about the personal and the qualitative. It's about why we do what we do, you know, those personal reasons that are hard to measure and explain objectively. Uh, it's just wanting to have done the right thing. It's not about how much or it's not about numbers. It's not about the facts. It's about like that experience. It's about the quality. How did that make somebody feel? How did that make me feel? That is feeling. Thinking is about, you know, what you can define objectively. Like in a sense, this is what I think um, I want to do. This goal I want to reach. I want to have achieved that much. I want to have improved this much. I want to have been able to do this or that, you know, to be able to define something and to say, this is what I want to do and this is what I want to achieve. This is what, how I want to achieve it. That is thinking. Finally, judging and perceiving, that is about confidence. A judging type derives confidence from goals, from structure, from organization. The more you can organize something, the better you can put something together, the more you can stick to a plan and to keep it going forward, and the more you can feel yourself progressing on that plan, the more confident you feel as a judging type. As a perceiving type, confidence comes from adaptation and flexibility. When things are show coming up, when issues are coming up, and you can adjust, and you can jump, and you can deal with it, and you can change it, and you can fix it, and you can take care of it, and make sure that things are considering uh, moving smoothly forward, when you can keep on making sure you're moving forward and that you're changing and staying ahead of changes and things that are happening in the moment, that's when you get a sense of confidence as a perceiving type. And you know, there is this idea that perceiving types are lazy and that judging types are rigid, but you know, for a judging type, perceiving can be important. And for a, for a perceiving type, judging can be important. Judging can be like this sense of a deadline, like a, a perceiving type can look at judging and go like, oh yeah, I have to make sure I don't do that, and I have to make sure I don't do that mistake, and I have to make sure I'm not late. A judging type comes from the perspective of wanting to be on time. I want to be on time. A perceiving type comes from the perspective of I don't want to be late. I don't want to miss this schedule. I don't want to miss this deadline. I don't want to miss this goal. You know, I, I want to stay ahead of schedules. I want to stay ahead of goals, you know. And if you don't, as a perceiving type, you experience stress. And there are a lot of perceivers out there that are complete stress personalities, constantly trying to stay ahead of everything and to avoid being late and to avoid making mistakes and to avoid interruptions and to avoid like uh, things, obstacles in the way of a plan. And they're constantly forcing themselves to use judging. But what gives you a relief, a sense of relaxation, what makes you relax? You have to make sure you tune into that. It's so easy in today's society to give in to stress and to push yourself and find yourself working for the wrong reasons, you know. You can do much better at work, you can do so much better in your life if you're able to focus on your positive motivations. Positive motivations give flow, negative motivations take away from that flow. So if you know you're an INFP personality type, you know you have a sensitive disposition, you have a private disposition, you have a disposition towards being, towards wanting to change things, towards being creative and towards being honest and you can find yourself constantly acting to avoid negative experiences you can find yourself pushing yourself you know a lot of INFPs 
are constantly going through this like stress from extroversion, sensing, thinking and judging. And they're going, oh, I have so much to do on my to-do list. I have so much left. I have, I'm so behind, you know, I, so much I should be doing right now. And they go, I should be so much tougher. I should be stronger. Why am I so weak? You know, why am I not able to be tough and tougher with other people? Why am I not to be able to stand up and resist critique and to just be there and be strong and not care? You think as an INFP, I'm so behind on this schedule. I should be more on time. I shouldn't be late. I should uh, be able to keep up. You know, uh, you you come you keep coming from this like sense of negativity and you going like, how can I be better at this? But maybe you should be asking yourself to do things that you enjoy instead. Maybe you should be asking yourself, am I being honest with other people? How can I be more honest with myself? How can I be more true to myself in my daily life? What is my truth? What is it I want to do? What is it I think is right? How can I be creative in my daily environment? How can I make sure that I am living my own life, making my own decisions and changing things according to how I want them to be? How can I make sure that I am having a significance in what I do? How can I make sure that in my work I am doing something good for the world and I'm actually leaving something behind and I'm actually having an impact with what I do? And you want to be asking yourself, really, can I express my own inner world what are my own thoughts what are my own beliefs what is it i think can i share that with other people can i share my own theories my crazy ideas with the world because that's our, that's your natural aptitude everyone has a natural aptitude a natural strength a talent that they're very good at and it's so much better if we have a world where everyone is engaging in their natural aptitudes and doing what they love doing what they're good at than if we have a world where everyone is trying to avoid and compensate for their weaknesses. We live in a world where we are constantly trying to compensate for our weaknesses instead of trying to build on our strengths. Everyone is trying to be this balanced person, not an introvert or an extrovert, but an ambivert, not an intuitive or a, sensitive, a sensing type, but a realist, not a thinking or a feeling type, but a logical and smart type, you know. Not a judge or a perceived, but everything. We want to be everything. We want to have. We want to be this person without faults, without flaws, without issues. But having a personality is having something positive. It's having a gift. It's having some kind of strength. And understanding that gift is being able to rewrite your mind, take control of your own processes, take control of your flow, and to create and use this flow to push yourself forward in life. When I started changing my life in accordance with my own personality type, when I started working towards my personal visions, when I started trying to have a personal significance in the world, when I started trying to leave a positive mark on the world and to help others, when I started to share my own inner world instead of keeping it only to myself, and when I started following my own vision and my own drive and working towards what I loved, I felt so much better with myself, so much better about myself, so much happier, so much more relieved. When I stopped trying to be strong for everyone else, when I stopped taking on the burdens of sensing, when I stopped trying to push myself to be more present with everyone else and to force myself to go in situations I didn't like, I felt better. You know, that's personal development. The Myers Briggs type can help you with personal development and with personal understanding. So, understanding all of this in this video, take charge, find out your personality type, leave a comment down below and let me know what personality type you are and explore my content on my YouTube channel and on my website ericdor.com to learn more. And together, let's make a difference. Let's spread flow, let's spread good vibes and let's create a world built for all personality types and for everyone, building on everyone's differences and using it to solve the problems of the future. Thank you for being here and hope to see you all in the next video.